Joy Harjo and Jennifer Forrester mentorship program, which was for girls becoming um, their mentorship. And so it gave us a lot. And they also gave us a lot of vision and guidance and help in wanting to um, develop our program. And so here we are. And we've actually had um, several youth already go and give their presentations. So you can go see those two that they're online. Um, and this week we have two presentations today and then we'll have one on Thursday. So you can check that out too. And then we have a few next week as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Charles Mason and Sudo Harjo as they can go ahead and um, see this program. Thank you guys, go ahead. It's, uh, it's gonna go talk to the girls. Uh, I live in Omogi, Oklahoma. I'm a descendant of Casita Tribal Town. I go to New York Baptist Church and I'm a proud member of the Muscogee Nation. It's Jay Sudaharjo, I'm from Okima, Oklahoma. I'm of the Deer Clan and my tribal town is Fish Pond and I go to Springfield United Methodist Church. Thank you guys. So, here we go. So tell us a little bit about your mentorship. Well, our mentorship was over the past few months of how to make a traditional bow. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting for any of y'all who might actually want to do it in the next year. Um, I've wanted to do it for a long time, but never really got to do it until this program happened because either I was in football or some other summer activities and yeah, and I like to keep the tradition going of how to actually make all the uh, traditional weapons and stuff like that. Cool, awesome. I chose, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I chose bow making because I felt like I need, needed something challenging and it was something new to learn about the culture. It also took primitive skills. Oops, sorry about that. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. So tell me a little bit about your mentor, or tell us about your mentor. I was honored to make the traditional bow through our mentor, John John Brown. He has been making bows for over 10 years and has been teaching them for six years. John John was taught bow making by the late Mike Berryhill, who has encouraged him to pass it down and keep the tradition alive. I met John John when he was one of the first people to show me how to actually shoot the bow and how to actually make them. He, he is one of the biggest inspirations for me to actually start making bows and other traditional weapons like that. Awesome. In the history of bow making, the bow was the first line of defense. It was usually ranged from 100 to 200 feet per, uh, so that you could shoot. So from where your original uh, position was and the bow was always like one of the biggest protections that you had if there were any invaders coming that you couldn't really use like tomahawks and other stuff like that and the coming of age you usually be like six to seven years old to actually get one, as long as you could pull the string back to actually shoot the bow. 
but you would really be around 13 years old to about, I don't even know about like 19 until you actually had to change the bow as you would keep growing. And for hunting, you would usually shoot big game animals or small game animals or even go f maybe fishing if you even needed to. The sacredness of the bow is that most most of the bows were the most sacred in the household and the women and children couldn't touch it. And the medicine man would put strong medicine on the bow for the for that particular person. What about some of the modern uses? Uh, the modern uses were used for hunting and war in the past, and now they are used for games and social interactions. As you can see on the top right, that is called the draw knife. Mm -hmm. We'll use that first to take off the skin of the tree, and then we'll use the tomahawk or the axe, sorry, on the top left to cut the tree down or take off any excess wood. And the filing knife is the very bottom one, which we would use to curve it out, the handles and the uh, bow, so it wouldn't uh, be boxy, so it wouldn't hurt your hands to hold. This is the process of how we actually made the bow. The first picture on your left is how uh, when we cut the bow arc tree down, it, um, we usually cut it down during the winter uh, uh, below, temp or below freezing so all the sap will be in the ground and not in the actual trunk of the tree or wherever we're cutting it out because Bodark trees usually have a lot of sap in them, and it's usually very hard to actually get them. And then on the right, you can see that we're putting glue on both the ends of the tree after we split it, so none of the there's no cracks after after it's curing or anything. And it usually takes four years or a minimum of, um, of one year to cure the tree. On these photos, we are shaving it down with a draw knife to the right thickness it needs to be. On the bottom right is when we use the hatchet because there's too much wood on it. So all we're doing is cutting down the wood with the hat hatchet, sorry, or axe. So we can actually start to be able to make it bend. And then on the top left, we are using, or we're not using anything, but we're drawing out lines of what the bow is going to look like after we are done or what we want it to look like. On these photos, we shaved the wood down to, the, to a line so we could start bending it.
as you can see from both of these photos, the both the ends are very thin. So that's when we start we're able to actually start bending them to actually get them into the bow shape of when we actually want to shoot them. And you can see that we're cutting it with the draw knife. And you can see where the handle is going to be. And we were going to actually need to cut a little bit away of that because it's a little too long and thick still. This is our traditional bows after all our hard work. Yeah. And we're planning on making arrows, traditional arrows to go along with those. Um. And I can kind of see that Suda has hers behind her. Yes. And Charles has his right there with them. Awesome. got to be patient because this usually takes for a person that is learning about a week or maybe longer if you're not really um, really patient because you got to have a lot of patience to actually be doing this because it takes a while. Uh, I picked endurance because it took us a lot of hard work and we never gave up until we were done. This is just like art because it can calm you down and it can make you just realize how fun that I can be and that this could be in your future of anything. Awesome. Um, I picked nature because it was pretty cool to see what you could make from the beauty of nature. Awesome. You guys did awesome. So, if anyone has any questions for Charles and Suda, we have the Q&A box and then you also have a chat box too. So I know that there were a couple of questions, like I even had a question. I didn't know. So I think you guys were talking about whenever you had, um, you were waiting for the bark or the tree to be ready. What did you mean by cure? You, you said you had to wait to cure it. So what does that mean? Cured as in dried a little bit, but not too much because there's a lot of sap in the tree mm -hmm. so it usually has to come out before we can actually start to make the bow. Oh, okay. I was like, I had heard you guys say it and I didn't know what that meant and I was like, I don't know, it might mean something different. Let's see, do we have any questions from anyone in the audience? Ooh, we have several youth and some adults with us watching. Uh, of the of the whole process, like you guys going out and looking for the the tree and things like that. Um, what was your part of the process? Would you like? What did you like the best? Um. I'd say for me, actually trying to go out and find the tree, because mm -hmm. they're usually kind of hard to find them in most places. Hmm. Mine was like shaving it down to what it had to, to be. Uh, it's like the pictures don't do any justice. They look pretty good. So far, no questions, but we shall see here. Oh, there is a question. Hold on a second. 
Someone asks, um, do you know, are the, are the arrows made with the same material? So what your bow is made from, are the arrows going to be made from the same thing? Uh, no, cause I believe the arrows are made out of a uh, river cane because mm -hmm. the wood is made out of bow dart. And we, we were trying to do like a really traditional kind of arrow, which we would use a flint for the tip and then feathers, like, I, I don't know what kind of feathers from what kind of bird or anything, but just some sort of feathers that actually fit the uh, arrow. Oh, cool. All right. So there was another question that came in. It says, after your mentorship is over, will you continue to make the bows? Would you like to continue to make the bows? Yes. Uh, I want to make my sister one. Oh, okay. Awesome. Do you think like from what you've learned from John John from the both and and from each other, like are you do you think that you're gonna be able to make one by yourself or will you still continue to need his help? Maybe a little know. bit. <laughs> Yeah, maybe a little bit. What did you say, Charles? Because we'll, we still need to learn how to actually like measure out different sizes of bows uh -huh. and how to um, put the little uh, niches in it where the string will go around mm -hmm. the uh, bow so it won't actually like slide down or anything. Okay. Yeah. So with your, um, like you said, you need to learn like how to do the sizes. So what is the size based off of? Is it based off like how far you can pull it or? It's based off height. Yeah. Height. Okay. Yeah, because my bow is almost as tall as me. And Suze is almost as tall as her. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is the, the material besides like the, the bow itself? What is the, is that just rope or what did you guys use to, for your string part? I believe he just used a regular rope that he strung around himself on a little thing that he made. I've seen him do it, but I don't know what it is. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Let me see if we have any more questions. Do have any more questions? I know I'm getting a lot of information. No more. Well, thank you guys for sharing about your mentorship. Uh, I know like it was very interesting to me to see this. I don't know of how long it's been since I've seen somebody with like a longbow or even learning how to make one. That's really cool. So uh, if anybody has any other questions or um, even any comments, you know, feel free. You're welcome to um, give us a call if you have any questions or if you want to email us a question, you're welcome to do that as well. And on the on the slide, you can see um, our phone number and our email address. And then you can actually go to our um, website and check out our events. We're going to be having uh, a couple more um, cultural arts mentorships. Um, some of the mentees are still going to be sharing about their presentations. We have one Thursday coming up. And it's going to be the same time. It'll be at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. So you can come check that out. Um, hopefully we'll get it going on Facebook again. And then you can always go to our YouTube channel and look for Muskogee Youth. And you'll be able to see um, the presentations there as well. And so I just want to say Mado to Suda and Charles um, for their hard work this past nine months. They did. 
and some pretty amazing um, work that they've done. So Mado, and thank you to everybody that has been watching and has been with us today. Um, Mado and uh, Hadam Jihijathlis, we'll see you guys again. Thanks.